Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Monday, August 15th, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, the city of Milwaukee prepares for more anti-white riots as angry mobs announce they are ready to burn down white suburbs and go to war with the police. Meanwhile, InfoWars reporters have boots on the ground in Milwaukee. Then, Bill Clinton's sexual assault accuser, Paula Jones, takes a selfie with Donald Trump. And a Secret Service whistleblower says Hillary Clinton has major neurological problems. In more ways than one. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Because if her health is deteriorating just like this, and there's probably a good chance she's not going to be able to stand up on her own soon, do we need to be looking at Kane more? The latest on the riots in Milwaukee, the police chief there says an 18-year-old man suffered a gunshot wound to the neck during unrest. Uh, in the city's north side last night, but they say his life is not in danger. They also went on to point out that officers did come under fire Sunday night, but no officers return fire. So this is what we're seeing here in this city is kind of going on in other Democrat run cities across the country um, where we're seeing they're giving the police cause to police their communities, but the police are basically going to become too afraid to go in these areas. We're creating no-go zones in our own country. Uh, the police chief, Ed Flynn, says 11 men and three women were arrested Sunday for disorderly conduct, and there is a strict 10 p.m. curfew that's going to be implemented this evening. Um, any teenagers in the area doesn't really say what they're going to do with them, but it, they say it's going to be strictly enforced. Now, this clampdown follows two nights of violent unrest in the city. We're going to have our guys there on the ground. Joe Biggs, Jakari Jackson, and Rob Dew will be there. So uh, be sure to check out the Alex Jones YouTube channel for some reports. I'm sure they'll get some uploaded this evening. But of course, all of this violence uh, is, is coming in the wake of 20 23-year-old Seville Smith being shot and killed by a black police officer who was wearing a body camera. They say they want to get that footage out to everyone as soon as possible. Um, but what we've seen, this shooting has triggered an anti-white riot. Uh, people were actually seeking out any white people they could find in the area, telling them that they were getting ready for a beatdown. Um, all of this is because of this man... <laughs> I hate to call him a thug because people think that's racially charged. You can't. That's not politically correct. Uh, but that's what he was. He was. He, police found him with a loaded handgun in his possession. The gun that he had was stolen during a home invasion in March. Um, th they also said that there was 500 rounds of ammunition taken during that robbery. So who knows what you know what was being planned? Um, but now there's also some video footage coming out of the sister of this man who was shot dead by police calling on rioters to burn down the suburbs instead of their own neighborhoods. Oh, everything! So is mama gonna fight for her love! Burning down ain't gonna help nothing! Don't burn it down shit we need in our community! Take that shit to the suburbs! Burn that shit down! We need our shit. We need our weed! I don't wear it, but we need it! No justice, no weave, right? So this is what they're fighting for. We have this person who is a gangster, robbing people, posing with his guns. And when you live that kind of a lifestyle, that's what, you know, you, there are repercussions for that. But now we have the new Black Panther leader coming out, uh, gave an exclusive interview to Breitbart saying that this is a war. And why is it a war? Uh, because it's a war against black people because we are the ones being murdered. But no one is talking about the fact that just the night before uh, Mr. Smith was shot, five other people were shot. And there were no riots there. And Milwaukee is an incredibly dangerous city. Um, you know, but there's no riots for all the shootings. Same like we're seeing in Chicago. They had one of their deadliest weekends ever. 52 people were shot and at least nine dead. Um, and that was just on the first night of the weekend there between nine Friday and early Saturday. So again, no riots when we are seeing this black on black crime. It's not it's only when their cops are shooting these people who are justifying their neighborhoods being policed when you're in 
involving yourself in gang activity and robbing people. But like I said, they're going to create some no-go zones in this country. And we also have uh, an, an, a Milwaukee official coming out justifying these riots once again, saying that the riots, you know, is the voice of the unheard. Um, he says this is a warning cry, meet black people's demands or else. So this was Alderman Khalif Rainey. He made a lot of these excuses kind of stopping short of condoning the violence he said Milwaukee is the absolute worst place in America for African Americans to live in the entire country. Black people are tired of living under this oppression. And this is a warning cry. Where do we go from here? Where do we go as a community? Do we continue with the inequity, the injustice, the unemployment, the undereducation that creates these byproducts? He demanded the grievances be rectified immediately because if you don't, this vision of downtown, all of that, you're one day away, one day away from it happening again. And of course, it's very odd to see them critiquing uh, the injustice that has caused this um, bubbling over, if you will, because it's a Democrat-run city. In fact, they've even had socialist mayors elected to run their city in the 20th century. So for more than 100 years, this city has been run by Democrats. Sheriff David Clark, uh, who's obviously the, the Milwaukee count, uh, County Sheriff there, he railed against these progressive policies. And he said that all that the police shooting does was act as an igniter that what causes the riots is the inescapable poverty in the city of Milwaukee. It's the sixth poorest city in America, massive black unemployment. Uh, failing public education system, one of the worst in the nation, and of course the questionable lifestyle choices and the kids with no fathers around, fathers absent from the homes. And he also went on to argue that it's the growth of the welfare state that encourages the violence. And that he said these people are being told that Uncle Sam is going to be their dad, but Uncle Sam is a horrible father. He's he's providing these people with just enough money to feed their kids, but not enough to claw their way out of poverty. And this is what we've seen in Milwaukee, Chicago, Baltimore, New York, other areas. It's this per, these progressive policies that the people continue to vote for because they scare them and say, well, you're not going to be able to feed your children if we take this these policies away. But rather than giving them something that's actually going to give them jobs, to give them a decent quality of life. So Clark concluded his interview arguing that the progressive Democrats and the political class who have ruled Milwaukee have to be honest and say, look, we set up the government dependency. It has backfired on us. Progressives want votes, black votes, and they do it how? By keeping black people hooked on the high of handouts. And of course, we have been talking about that forever. If you go and watch Hillary's America by Dinesh D'Souza, you will see an excellent breakdown of exactly how the Democrats have gone from the plantation um, to the ghetto here, keeping people kind of on the Democrat plantation there. And also a uh, really great tweet that I saw over the weekend. Uh, this one came out by Nick Short, and it's an excerpt taken from the communist attack on police, which was written by Cleon Skousen back in the 60s. Uh, it talks about why the war on U.S. police became vital communist strategy. And just take a listen to this excerpt and see if it sounds a lot like what we are witnessing across the country right now in all sectors. Um, so from the beginning, in order to get a, rev a revolution ignited, there must be violent mobs so overwhelmingly large that police power is smothered or else the police must be so paralyzed and discredited that smaller mob actions can succeed. The communist war against the police was therefore launched on two fronts. One, to create a potential for massive mob violence, which would smother the police, and another to set up machinery to paralyze the police. It was exposed in 1961. Investigators discovered that the Communist Party was distributing manuals to its trained riot makers, describing the various ways to lead a mob so that it could overwhelm or circumvent any kind of police action. Um, and then it goes on to just say that loyal followers fired a blast of hate propaganda against the police mingled with wild charges of police brutality. And then, and this is where they kind of set up these civilian police review boards, which is something that we are also seeing happening here in America. They set up these civilian police review boards so that they can kind of infiltrate it and get it out of the control 
of the state on into federal government hands. And we are seeing these riot makers, well-trained, getting in there. We saw it in Cleveland. They were able to get circumvent the police barriers that were set up, and they were very well organized. So, you know, this is something that is going on in all sectors where the civil unrest is being fomented. So now what we're witnessing is a weaponized victim class on all fronts that's being used to carry out this unrest, the divide and conquer, black versus white, rather than educating these people so that we can all come together and fight against the policies that are truly destroying these communities. That's what it is. It's, it's not the black versus white. Obviously, one of the big reasons that this is happening is the fact that we have a media that is totally in cahoots with the establishment. So rather than um, educating people on the policies that are destroying their communities, they are protecting the very people that have been for hundreds of years implementing these bad policies. Um, just for the last few decades, it's the Clintons. Now, as we know, it was Bill Clinton and a lot of his uh, policies that have landed a lot of African-American fathers in prison. Hillary Clinton, of course, is flip-flop saying, well, you know, I'm going to change those policies that are put in place. Yeah, right. Um, don't forget, she called you guys super predators. Um, but now we're actually starting to see the media covering up for a sexual predator that's going to be, you know, potentially the first dude in the White House. So a picture that's making the rounds on social media uh, one of Bill Clinton's sexual assault accusers, Paula Jones, was actually taking a selfie with Trump. And she posted the selfie saying, we need a real president with brains and guts. So it's kind of interesting to see a lot of these women forcing themselves into the public realm. Of course, one of these women is Juanita Broderick, who has been saying for decades that she was uh, one of these victims of Bill Clinton. She says that he raped her and she just wants to be believed. Um, now, BuzzFeed did a rare act of <laughs> journalism here and goes on to talk about how Juanita Broderick, um, she was enraged when Hillary Clinton tweeted that every sexual assault survivor had the right to be believed. And of course, a lot of people seized on that saying, well, really, well, what about your sexual, the, the women that accused your husband of sexual assault, Hillary, didn't they deserve to be believed as well and not to have their lives ruined? Um, so. What we have seen here with this article is that Hillary Clinton's website has actually been scrubbed of the words women deserve, women have the right to be believed. Now, even though the video still has her saying that, if you look uh, on the Wayback Machine, it shows you her original quote from September 2015, where she has, you have the right to be heard, you have the right to be believed, and we're with you. Well, now the website, and they didn't comment to BuzzFeed as far as why they changed this. It says, don't let anyone silence your voice. You have the right to be heard. So Hillary Clinton got called on the fact that she didn't believe those women who came forward and accused her husband. So she just completely scrubbed it from her own website. And this is how this is how it is in Clinton's America. More transparency. Now, Roger Stone was on the Alex Jones show today with some more bombshell information that hopefully can be just another nail in the coffin of a Clinton presidency. The New York Times should be ashamed of themselves. This story, if you read it carefully, indicates that there that Manafort is not the subject of an investigation, that there is no evidence of secret campaign uh, or, or financial transfers to him. Uh, this is a nothing burger. All the news that's fit to print embellished with a Clinton tin. There's no story here. This was manufactured news. Now, juxtapose that with the New York Times failure to delve into the current criminality at the Clinton Foundation. The Clintons have set up a Clinton Foundation Canada that is unregulated, where millions of dollars from Mr. Joustra, who purchased the uranium concession, have flowed. You know how much of that has been reported in the New York Times? None. So uh, this is a manufacture, which I can reveal here, is done on the basis of research that was conducted in Ukraine by Sidney Blumenthal using heavy-handed private detectives. They have dug for months on Manafort, and they have found nothing. There is no investigation. Manafort is not a target. The scrawled note that is in the headline tracks to no bank transfer records. There is no proof of any payment to Manafort. It's a 
canard. But expanding on that, he has been an international consultant to hundreds of different groups. And so I don't care if he's been a consultant to an elected government. Uh, it's, it's George Soros running around overthrowing governments. Well, and he has never worked for the Ukrainian government or for the Russian government. So as he has As you point out, Alex, the whole involvement of Putin and the Russians is a canard. Let's be very clear. The DNC hacked emails involving the theft from Bernie Sanders and the role of Deborah Wasserman Schultz was hacked by Crucifer 2 and posted online five weeks ago. When it got no traction, he took those documents to WikiLeaks. They put them out and they received substantial traction. No involvement by the Russians, no involvement by Putin. Uh, the whole idea that Manafort and Trump are somehow aligned with Putin, uh, working with Putin, this is a falsehood. Well, I'm now confirmed from our no. NSA sources, not just Benny on air, but the word is that it's been tracked. It is U.S. sources in intelligence leaking most of this now because they're so concerned about Hillary. And I have had the Secret Service, uh, Mr. Stone, directly give us intel confirming her medical issues now, which I tell you is one of the scariest things I've ever done because... I don't know how serious this is. Yeah, look, I think that the, that the that her medical issues are yet another example of the New York Times shirking their responsibilities and essentially writing nothing. Well, stick around because joining me in studio, Darren McBreen is going to do a special segment on a lot of the propaganda that we have been witnessing throughout the decades and how that propaganda is now helping to facilitate a Hillary Clinton win. If you want to preserve your power indefinitely, you have to get the consent of the ruled. And this they will do, partly by drugs, as I foresaw in, uh, in Brave New World, partly by these uh, new techniques of, uh, uh, of propaganda. Uh, they will do it by bypassing the sort of rational side of man and appealing to his uh, subconscious and his uh, deeper emotions and uh, his physiology even. And so making him actually love his slavery. I mean, I think this is the danger, that actually people may be in some ways happy under the new uh, regime, but they will be happy in situations where they oughtn't to be happy. At the end of World War II, Operation Paperclip was launched by the Office of Strategic Services, the OSS, to smuggle known Nazi war criminals into the United States for recruitment into U.S. intelligence agencies. The Nazis were cleared to work in America after having their backgrounds bleached by the military. False employment histories were provided, and their previous Nazi affiliations were completely removed from the record. The OSS provided a model for the Central Intelligence Agency that was established in September 1947. The CIA specialized in propaganda, economic warfare, sabotage, and demolition. By the early 1950s, they controlled over 25 newspapers and wire agencies and had 3,000-plus employees engaged in propaganda. Journalists willing to promote the views of the CIA included members of the New York Times, Time Magazine, Newsweek, The Washington Post, in CBS television. Do you have any people paid by the CIA who are working for television networks? This, I think, gets into the kind of uh, getting into the details, Mr. Chairman, that I'd like to get into in executive session. At CBS, uh, we uh, had been contacted by the CIA. As a matter of fact, by the time I became the head of the whole news and public affairs operation in 1954, the ships had been established, and I was told about them and asked if I'd carry on with them. Well, we're really talking about intelligence at the highest levels of the U.S. government, setting the broad direction uh, for the nation. Well, Darren, it seems like the more things change, the more they stay the same. Now, this was Operation Mockingbird exposed during the church hearings way back in the day and people thought you know it was exposed then and they, they kind of wiped their hands yeah now that it's exposed propaganda. it's over it's over yeah. right well it's not over <laughs> it's it, definitely not over and now we're dealing with this propaganda coming from so many different channels it's not just your mainstream media outlets but also the tech companies are getting into it apple twitter google instagram things that people can't even imagine and if you've never been introduced to this kind of information mm -hmm. you have no idea how you're being controlled and specifically this 
current election is being controlled. Well, and that's the thing is, is a lot of people, and I've said this before on the show as well, a lot of people who don't even necessarily watch the news or read newspapers, they still form a strong political opinion based on television and the movies they go to or even the internet, you know, and that's because there's only a small handful of corporations that control all of it. We're talking 90% yeah. of everything you read, everything you watch on TV and everything you listen to on the radio. And now as you were pointing out, social media as well and, and all throughout the web. So they are in control. They've been doing it since the very beginning of media as far as um, television media and radio. Right. That's why they call it a program. Mm. Television That's why it was invented to program you. Look, and, and I want to give you an example. And WikiLeaks has been a blessing. You know, we, we learned so much from WikiLeaks, but it was April 17th uh, last year when uh, WikiLeaks discovered emails of the U.S. entertainment industry being recruited by the Obama administration. So what happened was, oh, we know for a fact through emails and through WikiLeaks that Obama was in touch with Sony Pictures and with Disney Corporation to help what they said in the emails control the narrative on ISIS and Russia's involvement in the Ukraine. Back in 2005, 2003 to 2005 during the first, uh, the second Iraq war, the Bush administration used video news releases and these were news packages that were put together by the State Department and the Pentagon, and they were passed on to the the major news networks to be played as actual news. Right. You know, so we know that's been going on as well. And I think that the latest propaganda isn't so much really a, a pro Hillary message as it is an anti Donald Trump message. Oh, in every single way, it's so completely obvious. And I just want to walk it back a little bit because of what you said. I mean, just how we've been being uh, prop propagated to. Now, we've reported uh, in 2013, they repealed the Smith Month Act officially, okay? Which was 1948, that was it, when it the first Smith came The Smith Month Act was passed in 1948, and mm -hmm. what it did was authorize the State Department to unleash propaganda outside of the United States, oh. supposedly forbidding its dissemination inside the country. Of course, with uh, those church committee hearings, we Operation Mockingbird was exposed, and we know that's not the case. But they've continued to propagandize. So now that this Smith Month Act was repealed in 2013, this means that the CIA can now openly propagandize to Americans. So they've been doing it this entire time, but under the veil of you know non-bias and, and truth <laughs> journalism, free press. But now that it's been repealed, I mean, they're not even trying to hide the fact that they are actively propagandizing. No, of course, they could do it right out in the open. And you know, I was talking about WikiLeaks. And, you know, they also discovered a PowerPoint presentation <laughs> from the DNC. And in the PowerPoint presentation, it says that, and, and this is just shows you how the media is, is supposed to follow orders. And this is a good example of how it works. And this is the number one theme to convince Americans, and, and that is that Trump is dangerous and he is dividing the country. And this is a perfect example. I mean, and look at this. It, it says... Call him out for dividing and insulting Americans. Use quotes from him about women. Cite ties to and support from groups like KKK and Incident incidents of violence. And, and these will downplay the Clintons ties to the KKK. But think about this, the mainstream media, bullet point by bullet point by bullet point, right. they followed these directions, yeah, right? Yeah, they had that their reporters crazy. that they could trust to infiltrate the Trump rallies or if they were, if he was giving a press conference, these are the questions you ask them. Meanwhile, speaking of Trump rallies and versus Hillary Clinton rallies, we've all heard that Donald Trump obviously nationwide, he is absolutely full capacity when it comes to his rallies. Versus Hillary Clinton, who has right. a hard time filling up a donut shop. But the main, <laughs> mainstream media was caught red-handed lying about the crowd size of, of Trump rallies. Now, they've even resorted to Photoshopping, yeah, photoshopping the images from so her rally. Crowd in, of course, we've seen <laughs> to make it look like more people are showing some up. Some state officials actually said Trump could only have 1,000 people in the stadium. They limited the size of the crowd. Or they'll take pictures of Trump rallies before, like two hours before everybody yeah. got there. So these are dirty tricks that they've been playing it's for a long time. It's all about the perception. And now they're saying that it's over for Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. See, I always thought that 
as long as they make it 50-50, the average, if the average American is convinced that it's tied neck and neck, and then if she, once she steals the election, they're more likely to go ahead and say, you know what, hey, it was close, you know, so they'll fall for it. Now, the media has even gone as far as saying it's over for Trump. Yeah. She's, she's winning by a landslide. Well, so. and it's also, too, just to, to get people <laughs> to discourage them from even going out and voting um, or to, for them to think, well, you know, when the landslide happens or when Hillary Clinton wins, I won't even question how that happened because the media told me he was never going to win anyway. He, he had no chance. He doesn't have a chance. He'll stay home and forget about it. And Alex Jones earlier in the radio show today, he was talking about how this is kind of a, like a Tokyo Rose propaganda from way back in the day. And for those of you who don't know who Tokyo Rose is, she was actually a Los Angeles native, but she was caught in Japan during the start of World War II. And uh, she spoke fluent Japanese and, and she was recruited by their propaganda machine. And she would go on the radio, especially to the, those who were in the Pacific, and she would tell our troops, give it up, man, you got no chance, you're, you're losing. <laughs> and, and so that's the same thing that it reminds me of what's going yeah. on with Hillary right now. No, I mean, it's true. Maybe we can take out the segment with uh, Tokyo Rose, let her take us out to the break. But that's it. I mean, these are just some dirty tricks. We had world-class journalists coming out admitting that every, every journalist has to get their talking points from the CIA. So, you know, you got to check your sources. They will give you a medal, GI, but only after you are dead. Your government lies to you every day, poor soldier. You have lost this war, GI. Your army will leave you behind. They do not care about you. I'm Margaret Hell reporting for Infowars.com. Hillary Clinton in a bid to steal the election. We saw her steal the nomination away from Bernie Sanders. She's going to try to steal the general election using undocumented aliens to do it. Now, the Associated Press that came out with this report uh, that says that Clinton is launching an effort to tap into the voting power of young undocumented immigrants. There are currently 730,000 young people living in the U.S. without legal status. And Clinton is launching a voter registration program. It's called My Dream your vote. This is being done on the four-year anniversary of an executive order that shields these immigrants from deportation orders. It also gives the group the legal status it needs to work in the United States. Now, legally, the group cannot vote in the general election, but as we've seen in many polling stations, proper identification isn't required to vote in some cases. It's even deemed racist if you ask somebody for their driver's license. Now, this Associated Press report that was done by a lady named Lisa Lehrer, uh, the way that it's written, it almost gives you a chuckle. It says, Clinton has made revamping the country's immigration system a key plank of her presidential campaign. Now, she goes on to say that uh, Clinton uh, vowed to restore and expand Obama's programs, closing the private sector detention centers, and taking a very hard look at the deportation policies that we have here in the United States. She's pandering for the 27.3 million American Latino voters that are eligible to vote in this election, as well as those 730,000 doing this push, even knocking on doors. Now, these youth, Clinton is setting her sights in a very formal way, uh, organizing this program for the Dreamers, all in a bid to steal the election. If she can't do it legally, she's going to harness the power of people that can't even legally vote in the country. Well, we've covered here in InfoWars how the United Nations and global bankers, they want to destabilize the West with mass migration. And I want to talk about specifically one person, Peter Sutherland, and uh, he's a former Goldman Sachs chair. He wants to use third world populations to, quote, undermine national homogeneity. This is what he had to say, and he's talking about a five-year plan in play now to enhance migrant mobility. Now, this man, um, in a bid to undermine free markets and basic human liberty, this is what he had to say. The United States, or Australia and New Zealand, are migrant societies, and therefore they accommodate more readily those from other backgrounds backgrounds than we do ourselves, who still nurse a sense of our own homogeneity and difference from others. And that's precisely what the European Union, in my view, should be doing to undermine. Now, he's talking about the mass migrant population, primarily from the Middle East and North Africa into Western society, namely France, England, Germany, Australia, and of course, the United States. That's the next step of this. And this man took a step down from his position. He's now the United Nations 
Migrant Council. He heads that up, and uh, it's the ultimate form of racism to undermine and destabilize the Western culture, Western society um, through social engineering. Now. With that in mind, there has never been a better microcosm for this than looking at Calais, France. I want to take you to an article that's coming out of the Daily Mail. Now, we've seen the effects of the destabilization, the undermining that Sutherland wants. Look no further than Cali, France, where locals are warned to stay off the streets of their own main roads. This article coming out of the Daily Mail, migrants wielding bats and knives, smashing up vehicles on roads near Calais, as the owners of the car sit in traffic, and, and not even bothering to see if there are children in the car, and many times there are, uh, smashing out the windows for fun and then running off. One lady gave an account of this. She posted it. It's gotten 6,000 shares as of this morning. She says, tell your relatives so they can avoid it. This is what's happening. She's advising other residents that migrants are coming out of the jungle, specifically, and the jungle is a makeshift camp in Calais. And originally, uh, migrants uh, that were a part of this notorious jungle, uh, they were only supposed to be 2,000 in number, and it's reported that there are now as many as 9,000 living there, and uh, they've flooded into this small town. The surge in these numbers is coming after French officials are warning that an increased number of jihadi terrorists could be hiding among the refugees. Uh, right next to a ferry port in this town. Now, the population is so tense in the jungle that police officers are actually afraid to enter it and execute law and order. Breitbart has reported on their site that residents, they face um, tire irons to the face, that they're walking outside at night. And the latest issue with these migrants flooding into Calais is that they're smashing cars on the highway just for the fun of it. Now, the damage comes weeks after lorry drivers, that's what they're calling their, their big truck drivers. They're using a route that they've, they've been warned not to use. It's only a matter of time, one expert says, before people begin to die on this highway. One August driver, he was threatened by a migrant wielding a chainsaw at night, uh, and one of these lorries actually burned out. So French politicians, they're saying they're promising to cap the population of the jungle. They promised to cap it at 2,000 with no more than 400 children. Now it's 9,000 strong. They're saying that they're going to bulldoze it. That's the latest report. But no word yet on where this mass population of migrants will go in the event that they do that. Now, speaking of chaos on the streets, Calais isn't the only place where that's happening. Look no further than Milwaukee. Uh, Infowars has actually sent reporters on the ground to Milwaukee in the wake of the mass riot and protests that are happening there. But Cali is definitely not the only place where chaos on the streets is ensuing. Now, following that deadly police shooting of Savelle Smith, and I just want to point out for those of you who haven't heard this case, Savelle Smith was carrying a gun. He was shot by police after fleeing a car. It was a traffic stop gone wrong. Milwaukee has erupted in mass chaos, mass rioting, mass protests, burning of cars. One police officer has actually been hospitalized after somebody threw a a huge rock, possibly a brick, we can't confirm what it was, through his windshield, and all of this in the wake of this 23-year-old shooting. Now, Black Lives Matter is on the ground and they're protesting in full force, violently raging, and one tape was picked up, and I want to read you some of the quotes coming out of this tape, uh, where protesters can be heard targeting whites on the ground as they see them walking past. Now, a clip was captured of these rioters. They were first chanting black power. Then they would notice a car would pass and they would, they would identify whether the person was white or not. And directly quoting what you can hear on this tape, you can hear someone say that's affiliated with Black Lives Matter, yeah, they white, yeah, they white, gonna get their blank screams another, then you can hear beating. Uh, they're, they're saying that they're gonna beat up every white person that they see, and one of them screams, he white, beat his head, expletive. Now this footage, it's mob style. Mobs are attacking cars, dragging the drivers out and beating them if they appear to be Caucasian reporters. One reporter was even targeted from the Milwaukee Journal Centennial. He was a reporter. He was thrown to the ground and punched repeatedly. He was just covering the protest. And in another clip, uh, rioters could be seen burning down a gas station while chanting black power. All of this, of course, being fueled by our race-baiting media. Uh, the unrest beginning after that police officer shot and killed an armed man. Now, the mayor of Milwaukee has said that a still has been released regarding the shooting, and the young man was, in fact, holding a gun at the police officer. Uh, the 
father of the young man has said, why couldn't you have just tased him, uh, you know, or the sister rather, why did you have to shoot and kill him? But uh, the mayor is saying that, that uh, the young man was in fact armed. The National Guard has been called, not activated yet. Now this unrest, it's continuing. Stores being burned, cars being burned, people are being encouraged to stay out of specific areas of Milwaukee. And all the while, our media, our mainstream media, isn't calling this for what it is. These are hate crimes, specifically from a domestic hate group. They're whitewashing this yet again. And uh, to get the full breakdown of the Black Lives Matter rioters that are targeting and beating up people, make sure you go to our website, Infowars.com, for the latest updates, the video footage showing these violent mobs and their attacks. We have reporters on the ground. We're going to be bringing you the latest information from Milwaukee as it's unfolding. I'm Margaret Hell, reporting for Infowars.com. Did you know that only six corporations control 90% of what millions of Americans see, hear, and read every single day? It's the illusion of choice. Think about it. The mainstream media is owned by only a handful of mega corporations with vested interests. But on the other hand, the internet is an interconnected network of billions of sources. So you can research information for yourself from multiple sources, or you can blindly accept what you hear or read in the mainstream media, never questioning what you are being told. This gives you a false sense of reality. I mean, do you actually know what you think you know? Or have you been programmed to accept someone else's version of events? Think about it. This is Darren McBreen, and I want you to break the matrix at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Welcome back. Now, joining me is Ashley Beckford. Now, Ashley, wow. Okay, so the downfall of the West. We're hearing about this all the time. It's who, happening every day. Who knew it was due to the rise in, in porn culture and the Tinder generation? Well, as a millennial, <laughs> I can tell you know what's going on. It's really, really crazy. And uh, basically, what we want to talk about is how uh, marriage and uh, just general interpersonal relationships between men and women are really falling uh, and an extreme uh, rate. To the point bad. where now there are there is record number of young men going for treatment for erectile dysfunction because right. they can't get aroused in the bedroom. Uh, basically, they're being desensitized with all of the graphic imagery that they're so they can access it right there on their telephone uh, on their cell phone. Right. You don't yeah. need to you know send a letter to your <laughs> beloved and have to wait a month for her to write back. Now it's just like swipe left, swipe right. Yeah, it's really sad. Uh, this uh, therapist was talking about uh, sexual dysfunction um, down uh, in, in the article. And uh, she goes on to say uh, that it's actually 25% of men under 40 now are actually experiencing sexual dysfunction. This is uh, according to a 2014 study in the Journal of uh, Sexual Medicine. Um, and then you also have that uh, the fact that these uh, porn, uh, uh, watching this porn, is actually like drug-like. Mm -hmm. it, it, it remini you know, it's reminiscent of an addiction. Um, it leads to lowered sexual enjoyment and diminished libido. Right, and the more you see, uh, the more graphic, the more extreme. You just have to keep taking it to that next level. So exactly. This is I mean, this is affecting people across the board. There's a story that came out in The Federalist today. Yes, men really did greater things when boobs were harder to see. <laughs> and uh, they use this example of, of art. Right. Ancient art and how women's bodies were treated as something worth years of effort to pursue. Now, uh, you, all you have to do is Google <laughs> something. I'm sorry, what were we what were we saying? I don't know. I'm so distracted oh. right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the, that's the problem with the guys. Here, guys. <laughs> they're, they're distracted by these images, these really, really graphic images in pornography. And then when they actually want to talk to a real woman, they've talked about it. Um, Paul Joseph Watson in his Sexodus video and also Kit Daniels in his anti-physical video. They talk about how it's so difficult now for men and women to relate because they've been just bombarded with these images that are so negative, you know, and just parse people up into these right. body parts. Well, and it's like, why would someone expend the effort to get to know you and, and really pursue you right. when all they have to do is go online and look at porn and look at these images of women who are nothing like 
a real woman in real life. Right. You and know, be, and your boobs aren't up to here, <laughs> right. you know, all the time. And then so this article goes on to talk about a curve. Mm -hmm. um, so and of course, it is shaped like a breast, you know. Right. <laughs> But it's 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 basically showing um, the male incentive to produce more than subsistence level goods when is more so when you're having to acquire favors from women ah. um, where it's more difficult. So exactly your productivity level as a male goes down, the easier it is to access, um, you know, Right, and, and that's sex. what they say, like, you know, the men on the beaches of Normandy, you know, these guys, you know, in the olden days when they were, you know, fighting the, the old wars, you know, they would be worried about how am I going to get home to my woman, you know, how am I going to provide for my family? And now that really isn't something that we see today. It's more like so much easy access that guys feel like they have no incentive, incentive to actually pursue a woman. Plus, they're afraid because of feminism. Uh, right. The article goes on to say that, Feminism does uh, real harm to women and men because it creates uh, this anger between men and women and uh, an uncomfortable kind of situation. Right. Well, it's a whole cultural Marxism of we don't need men at all. Right. We can do all right without you. But that's not that's not how we're created. We're made to to. Uh, help each other in the bedroom and out of the bedroom. <laughs> right. And also, you know, they talk a little bit about so the social media culture in general, how damaging it is for the mental health of young people. Exactly. We see people, so many people going in to get plastic surgery now because they want to look like these totally fake people online. And if you go on a site like Instagram, Everyone looks exactly the same. Exactly. They're all getting plastic surgery and doing their makeup the same. Right. And it's making people really, um, you know, it's destroying. An yeah, it's generation. creating insecurity. And then a lot of people, yeah, the whole millennial de uh, generation, you know, I I'm, uh, you know, single of marrying age. Uh, and the whole thing is, it's just destroying that whole, you know, concept. It's a template that of, no one can live up to. Right, finding value in another human being. Like, what, what's the real value, you know? Um, I, as I always say, you know, when you're looking for someone, you need to accept 80%, you know, and then, you know, that 20% that you don't like, then maybe you can work on that, you know, as a, uh, as a couple. But people aren't willing to do that anymore. They're not willing to put in uh, the effort that it takes. They're looking for an archetype. You know, some like 1954 type woman, and they're not really understanding, you know, we need to make sacrifices and also, you know, uh, just kind of, uh, you it know, takes compromises. A bit of effort. Yeah, it takes compromises and effort. It right. is all about the compromise. There was actually an article in the Daily Mail today uh, showing some old advertisements, and one of the advertisements <laughs> was like, hey, why'd you stop beating your wife or maybe you should <laughs> i mean it's like you see why the rise in feminism happened right because there i mean these are ads talking about how you know you need to beat your wife to keep her in line did exactly she, did she not pick you up fresh coffee at the store mm, well they're well. still saying that in islamic <laughs> countries i mean you can throw acid on her and that's right. you know honor killing you know well, but i think here what it is is divorce and that open you know culture since you know the 60s of everyone getting divorced, it's just made it more open. So it's just like, you know, people don't care to put in that commitment, that dedication that it takes. Well, let's talk about some other things that are kind of destroying the young people out there. This Revcom type mentality where we see that it's not the Communist mm. Party of old, right. but it's still this Communist Party that's getting into these young people and basically telling them that they are victims. They're the victim class. Women are victims. You know, the the, the uh, minorities are victims and basically training them to to create this mob violence, um, trained riot makers, right. how they can lead a mob and get the things that they want, demand that uh, people in charge have to step down if they don't bow to the things that they want. And now there's actually a story coming out that Oregon State is forcing social justice training right. on their freshmen. Everyone has to Diversity take and inclusion. Uh, well, if you don't know, if, if you're an InfoWars uh, watcher, you probably already know that this is a progressive uh, phrase to talk about kind of environmentalism, socialism, feminism, gay rights, but they're taking it to another level. They wanna make sure everyone's equal in like a creepy way, like Harrison Bergeron, mm -hmm. uh, Kurt Vonnegut, um, you know, 1984 type stuff. And uh, basically they're, they're using taxpayer money. They spent 
$11,500 on three racially segregated social justice retreats. <laughs> that's, that's absurd. And they talked about white privilege, racism, and oppression. And basically, it goes down to these concepts. Like, when, I, when you go to these types of things, they talk about, you know, they say things like, um, you know, all Europeans are bad, you're a peon, you have, you know, a lower social standing. And they're just basically trying to break everybody up. They don't want people to get together. They want to bring out microaggressions. Like if I say I like, you know, your hair, that's evil. You know, I like your shoes, that's bad. And it's, uh, it's just rough because everything is down to oppression studies. It's like oppression studies is not only just in the classroom with those Marxist professors, it's, you know, coming out and uh, getting into every aspect of our lives. Right, because it's evil and racist to educate people on how great this country actually is and how lucky everyone should feel to be a part of our culture and our, our society because we still have so much further to go. But don't do that. That sounds a little bit racist. Well, <laughs> thank you guys for tuning into the show tonight. We Thanks. will see you here again tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central.